Welcome to this week's piece. So this was my hope chest from when I turned 18. You know the we're going to kick you out of the house box that kids get? This was that. Don't worry, I wasn't kicked out of the house. But um, So I've had this for a long time. It matches none of my things. It's going to be a really, really exciting finish. But to get started on this chest, we are going to obviously remove the hardware, give it a good clean. And I was super, super inspired by McKay Designs. This girl is just incredible, incredible. She does the most amazing finishes. Um, I follow her on Instagram. I will link her Instagram account below if you want to go look at her stuff. It is just oh, so good. But so since this is so detailed and all the carvings and everything I'm using a really densely packed brush to go through and kind of dust out all the carvings before we get it wet and clean it that way because I don't want to make a bigger mess so it's just easier to dust out all the crevices first and then I'm going to go in with my liquid sandpaper and using the same brush I am going to use that to scrub inside all of the details um, this looks super super foamy it doesn't stay that way so just keep working at it you don't have to rinse off this product so i adore it for that reason and also this is a kind of shiny finish but not too much so it's going to help with that as well so for a base coat i'm just going to be taking my chalk mountain mellow white i'm using next to none on a natural bristle brush this is their small paintbrush and it is so so good they redesigned it this is the new one that they have and oh, I just, I love it for blending so much. Um, so I'm just taking this using just the smallest amount of paint and doing swirling back and forth every which direction because I need it to sink inside all of the details of this piece. If you're having trouble with that, you can also spray a little water on it to thin out the paint to help it go into all the crevices as well. But we're just going to do a quick base coat on this. And then I took out a bunch of colors that just make me happy. This doesn't mean that I'm going to use all these colors. I just pulled them out because I thought they would kind of go together and be something that I can use for this. So I'm starting with the lightest color and just kind of swirling around kind of in the center. I have no real rhyme or reason. There's some colors that I'll place over different areas because this is kind of... Um, an image in the front kind of a little scene so I am putting some of the woodland harbor where I think it should be a little more brown and I'm putting some purples where it should be a little more purple in my mind you can obviously do this however you like and then the colors are super pigmented so if I get them on and they're too strong these are just washes I'm not going in full with the paint I'm using a very 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 small amount of paint and I'm using my mister bottle and I'm turning it into a wash so instead of creating a bunch of different washes that I didn't know if I was going to use or not, I just very lightly dipped into the paint with the tips of my bristles of the brush. And then I used my Mr. Bottle to thin it out into a wash consistency. And I literally did this with whatever colors that I wanted, wherever I thought that I would like them to be placed, and swirled them around everywhere. You're going to work in a ton, a ton of different layers. That's kind of what builds it up and just gives it kind of like an ethereal glow. So you just work back and forth using whatever colors you want. If you decide that something gets a little too harsh, again, water it down and go over it again. You can even go over it with another color that you like better. You kind of just go back and forth. And I did actually keep my white open and I would go back in with the white also to either tone things down or get them back to where I started if I didn't like where it was heading. So it's kind of just a back and forth over all this. You can see I have it sped up quite a bit, but it's just very, very, very light washes all over. That's what we're doing here. And then once I felt like I was really happy with all my color placements, I took this, this is my seashell metallic. It's kind of my base metallic that I just keep on hand because I can tint it with whatever I want. And so I just used some of my silver glazing dust from Chalk Mountain and mixed it 
to where it hit like that really, I wanted a deep, deep silver. And so once I got that in there, got it all mixed up, I decided mm, it's not quite deep enough. So I added just a smidge of black paint to it to deepen it up. And then we're going to thin this out quite a bit. And this is kind of more of a literal wash where I'm thinning it out with water and I'm going to brush it on and you'll see it drip. And then I will also add my spray bottle as well. So the only reason I'm doing this right now is because one, I want a whole bunch of different textures like metallic and matte and all that in the finish. And so this dark color, I just want to go deep, deep down into all the crevices to make all of those pop. So I brush it on and then I wipe it back with a cloth. And then I'm going to do this all over the entire piece. So this is going to bring out the details in sitting in all the deep carvings and then also it's going to add the metallic to it as well so we're getting kind of a a double whammy there Now I'm going to go back in with my white and this is just dry brushing. So I'm very, very lightly going to go over and dry brush all of the high points of the carvings. So the edges, the tips, anything that's kind of sticking out, that's what I'm hitting with the brush and that's going to bring back more matte and just kind of make those pieces pop even more. So we're getting a lot of dark underneath and then the light on top with all of the colors underneath that you can still see. I know it's hard to tell here, but you can totally still see them. And again, I did this all over the entire piece. Now to seal, I'm going to take the silver that I had already made for the silver wash and I'm going to add in some bronze and some gold. And this creates my rose pewter color that I just adore and I've been using it quite frequently lately. It's just, I think, my new favorite metallic at the moment. And then I'm going to add in my poly. So once I add my poly, it's going to tone that down a lot, but it just gives just the most amazing glow and we're going to seal the entire piece with this color. You can also use this as a wash too. Like if you think it's going on a little too strong, you can water it down. You can also wipe it back. Um, but again, I'm sealing the piece with this, so. You do have to be a little careful because it has so many details and this is quite thin and since we're not wiping it back you just want to go over your piece after you're finished finished with each side and just keep checking on them to make sure you don't have drips anywhere because they will kind of pool in certain areas and you try and be careful with it but just know that it's something that you need to watch out for it's going to pool up if you have something carved as much as this piece is And I typically say now's for the fun part when I do gilding waxes, but truly this whole thing was just super fun to do. So I'm taking several gilding waxes. I've got bronze, gold, silver, rose gold, and I'm using these to just again hit the high points of these pieces. So I did like the rose gold on the flower petals, gold in the center. I did gold on the leaves. I did silver over kind of the mountainy looking thing added the copper on the branches, part of the birds. I just kind of mixed it up and did it wherever I felt like these colors would really make the scene pop. And man, oh man, is this like the prettiest thing I've ever seen in real life. I did start out with a glove on just because my hands are, I mean, they're just dirty all the time. But 
Uh, it's just, it's too hard to do gilding wax with a glove. I feel like it never, you can't get so precise. And if you do happen to mess up or get something somewhere that you don't want it, you can always go in with some clear wax. Um, I have out my hemp, hemp wax there and I just take a little cloth and dip it in there and you can wipe back any of the gilding that gets someplace that you don't want it. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and uh, oh man, I'm so excited about this one. So I have been dying to do this piece for so long. It was my hope chest when I turned 18, you know when your parents try and get rid of you and they give you the box full of like all the things that you could potentially need to move out. That was this box for me. <laughs> so my mom gave this to me when I was 18 and it was a kind of cherry finish. Um, matches nothing that I have nothing and it's you know when it's all that one color it's hard to see all the details so oh okay one of my most favorite furniture artists if you guys don't follow her she's incredible um it's she's called McKay Designs she is on Instagram I'm pretty sure she doesn't have a YouTube channel um but she just does the most incredible incredible finishes they're just magical ethereal just everything that is right with the world is put into her finishes and they're just so great anyways I love them I think she's amazing um, so I was trying to mimic one of the many pieces that she has done that style uh, I probably didn't come anywhere close to her she's just on a whole never level so uh, but I do love this I think it turned out so so beautiful there's so many different colors going on and variations and just, it has all the things. So, this is it.